Hi everyone, Phil from Tech for Techs here. Today we're going to basically test to see if applying your thermal paste differently on your CPU will actually give you different results as in cooling. Obviously the cooler a CPU is, potentially you could get better performance and not only that, it also allows the CPU to last longer. And while you're at it, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button at the bottom corner. It would really help us out. Thank you very much for watching. Okay, so first thing we do before we do any of the tests is basically clean the old thermal paste off. To do that, we're going to be using this product here, which is called Tim Clean uh, from Acaso. It's basically a citric base, sort of a, a lemony, probably smell, orange smell to it. So um, it's pretty good. All you do is apply a little bit to a cloth, like that, and then just rub it over the top of the CPU. It removes all the paste and then just wipe it again just to get any excess or residue off of that. And as you can see that looks pretty clean now. So what we're going to do is mount our cooler. The cooler of choice we're going to be using today is the Arctic Cooler um, which is the Arctic Freezer 7X. It's just basically one fan moulded design, we've got a review, you can click on the little info card at the top and you can see the review if you wish. It's a pretty good cooler, it's more of a budget range, but again it does the job. So first of all we need to apply thermal paste. In the first test we're going to just apply a blob in the centre. So... There you go, so just a small amount in the centre, and then we're going to basically test it and see how good that is, and then we'll try it a different way, and so forth. And between each test, we need to make sure the heatsink does not have any paste on the bottom, otherwise that's going to affect the test results, so that needs to be clean like it is there. So we're going to attach that now, and then do all the tests. Okay, now the heatsink is attached, we're going to turn it on and then basically do the tests. Uh, I'm going to adjust the camera now, so sorry for any movement. And the reason I'm not cutting or doing a screen grab is basically so you can see exactly what's going on and you can see I'm not editing the results in any way or form. So I'm just going to lower the camera first and then tilt slightly. go and you should be able to see the screen there and I'm just going to tilt it, the screen itself a fraction to get rid of that glare from our studio lights there we go so the way we're going to test this we're going to use hardware info which will check the CPU temperature and we're also going to use Passmark Burning Test. Uh, it's an older version, but this allows us to test all the cores at 100% uh, while we're doing the tests. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to make sure the CPU uh, runs at 100% whack while we're doing the tests itself. Uh, one thing to bear in mind, uh, what we're going to do is... One thing to bear in mind, we have set the BIOS to set the speed of the fan on the CPU to 50%. So the fan doesn't fluctuate and thinks it's getting too hot so it speeds itself up or anything like that. So all the test results are run exactly the same at the exact same speed on the set speed the um, processor is running at. Um, bear in mind this is an i7-9700KF. Uh, processor, you've got a Z390 motherboard, it is a Aorus uh, Elite motherboard, you've got 16GB of Patriot Viper 3 200MHz memory uh, in there and we're just using an old GeForce 750 just because that's all we need because it doesn't really matter uh, at this point what graphics card we're using. And then basically we run the test and then we have a look to see what temperatures it is running at. 
Okay, our test setup comprises of an Intel i7-9700KF processor, a Gigabyte Aorus Z390 Elite motherboard. We're also running 16 gig of memory, a Seagate Firecuda 520 SSD, as well as a few other bits and bobs, which is pretty generic. Um, but the basics is all tests are run in 15 degrees Celsius rooms. All the tests are run for 30 minutes each. The temperature is the average temperature at those tests. So, for example, if one core was 70, another core was 60, the average would be 65. But again, it's the average temperature over 30 minutes and the average temperature of all cores combined. All the voltages are fixed for the testing, so there's no fluctuation, and we make sure that the CPU, obviously, when it is under load, is under 100% load and all cores are being stressed. Uh, we don't test the fans on automatic mode because that sort of defeats the object because if you've got a bad cooler, it will basically run the fans faster to get roughly the same temperature. So we run the test at 50%. On all tests, the test machine is running the same version of Windows with Windows updates disabled, so there's no differences for any reason with any updates causing problems in the background or differences for whatever reason. That goes for the same for the drivers and all background programs are also disabled so that we can basically test it under a controlled environment as much as possible. So altogether we did five tests. We did a dot test, which is basically like a P in the center of the CPU, a one line test, so one line from top to bottom, three lines, uh, so one down each side and one down the center, an X shape, and then it spread evenly. And as you can see from those test results there, pretty much all the temperatures are very similar. The spread does have the slightly better temperature, but it's all within a mile of error to be honest with you and to be honest it probably doesn't really matter too much as long as you don't put too little paste on there you should be fine